Hello, good morning, my dear students. The chapter which I am going to begin now is considered as one of the pillar in physics, and that is Newton's laws of motion. It has a wide contribution in physics. It opens a new branch in physics called kinetics, which deals with the motion of all the motional bodies in universe, along with its reason and the mass and the detailed discussion of the force or the applied force on the body from Newton's laws of motion we get a lot of information that is about the concept of the reason of motion that is force that is how a body can start moving inertia measurement of both force and inertia relation among force mass acceleration is it that is how a body can start how it can decelerate or accelerate also then the concept of change in momentum relation between force and change in momentum okay and and finally then how force acts on the body clear so basically while observing the motion of the stars and the planets newton invented these laws and the important and the collected informations he generally represented in the form of three laws which are called Newton's laws of motion. So let's begin with first law of motion. Due to lack of space, I have not written the laws. So let's take the first law. What does the first law of New first Newton's laws of motion state? It states that a body must persist or continue in its state of rest or uniform motion unless acted upon by in external reason that is force clear so let's explain it so if we see that this law contains two parts if we divide it into two segments that is a body must continue in its state of rest or uniform motion this is one part and the second part unless acted upon by any external reason that is force so already we have get the concept of force okay so let's explain so suppose if any object, it may be a ball or any stone or any book, is on at rest. Now it cannot move automatically by itself if we want to displace it. We will have to apply something externally and that is force. Again, if a body which is in motion along straight line or in which is moving either in a straight line or in a circular path. So if we want to stop it or want to change its direction, also it can it cannot happen automatically by itself again we need to apply externally some, something external which is called force so we already got the so from the last expression the last segment that is unless acted upon by some external reason that is force so what is force so we can define the force from it that is what is force that is the physical reason the physical reason force is the physical reason which changes or tends to change in the state of any object clear changes means obviously by applying a force a body at rest can only be in the motion or a body already is in motion either can be stopped or can change its direction only by application of force otherwise it is impossible so this is the so we have already got the concept and definition of force now let's move to the first part which is very very important that is a body must continue in its state of rest or in uniform motion what does it mean? as i said a what the natural property of a stationary body is always to be at rest is always wants to be at rest it means a body which is at rest always want to keep maintain retains its state of rest again a body already in motion again for the same room it always wants to be at motion it means it wants to keep maintain and retain its state of motion a body at rest cannot move automatically by itself a body in motion cannot be stopped or change its direction automatically by itself. In both the cases, in both the cases, the body cannot change its state automatically by itself. Okay. So this property is called general property of the body. For a body at rest, it wants to be at rest, and a body in motion always always wants to be in motion. This natural property or inherent property of a particle is called inertia clear you can see inertia inside the word you can see the word inert 
which means inactive clear so it means he always wants to maintain his previous state so that's why the alternate definition of inertia is inability of a body to change in its state it wants to be at rest it wants to be in motion it means it is not interested in change in its state state of a body at rest always want to be at state a body in motion always means it is absolutely doesn't have any interest it wants to keep its original position that's why inability clear so clear so this is that about the concept and definition of force and inertia okay the ability or the inherent property of a body due to which it opposes any change in its state that is either it is rest or motion it's called inertia so first law is obvious so so this is the first law nothing is special in it okay so this is up to the first law now the fact is that we have already learned so this is clear that a body at a stationary body if we want to move a stationary body or if we want to stop a movable body or change its direction a force is required but the question arises is force only required during starting of a motion of a rest body or to stop a movable body what about during this motion during this journey in between this journey because from our daily experience we have seen that if we roll anything that is a football or any ball isn't it on the ground after some time it comes to at rest if we stop pedaling a cycle a moving or running bicycle in spite of stopping the pedal after some time it also comes to at rest another example is the oscillation of a simple pendulum if initially to displace and move it after some time it also comes to at rest so what is happening isn't it the against of newton's first law of motion what does it say last line unless any external as uh, unless any external force acted on it it means it can only be stopped or change only by applying an external force if no force is applied it will continue but here it is infringing violating its law isn't it but no answer is no if you think minutely isn't it when the ball is rolled over the ground over the ground there is always a frictional force acts on the between the surface of the ball and the ground which acts in a direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the body and the body is an every moment keep losing its energy and after some time it stops it also applicable in case of motion of running cycle also stop pedaling frictional force which is acting between the tire and the force frictional force provides the rubbing between the road and the tire isn't it so it acts in direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the cycle and after some time it comes to at rest the oscillation of a simple pendulum in air in case of in case of the oscillation of a simple pendulum in air after some time it stops why because of the resistive force of the air it is fighting with the oscillation of the of the motion of the ball and it is losing its energy but the most interesting fact is that if we do the same experiment in a free space that is in absence of air that is in vacuum then we will what we will see we will see that it will keep moving forever eternally so it means if there is no resistive force here the condition is that is unless it means if a body if we do not have a body must continue its uniform motion also so only to start and to stop force is equal in between these two no force is required from this our daily experiences it may appears that since after rolling the ball or in spite of stopping the pang of the pedaling of the cycle it comes to a stress so if you want to maintain the velocity we need to keep pedaling so it is only applicable in case of presence of any resistive force this law is applicable sometimes in within the bracket provided no opposing or resistive force it means in absence of if there is no resistive or opposing force is present only in that case so this is the condition so in absence of any resistive or opposing force okay body must continue in its state of rest or uniform motion this is the ideal condition clear this is first observed by galileo and this is also called galileo's laws of inertia and after this then that's why it is also called law of inertia so first law newton's first law of motion is also called law of inertia clear now inertia is generally measured by mass 
mass is its measurement is means mass is called the measure of inertia why very easy now suppose a very uh, a body of very light weight isn't it it may be only a piece of stone a cricket ball a tennis ball or maybe a football is a crest now if we want to displace it we don't need to apply any much force any more force by applying only a less force we can displace it we can push or pull any bicycle or any a book if you want to move any book or any like a chair a bill by applying a least force we can displace it we can move it clear again if we want to stop a bicycle or something is coming to us like a by applying a least force we can stop it think oppositely if there is a huge stone is that waste on the ground isn't it if you want to move it lift it it is not so difficult task it cannot be done by applying a least force we will have to apply a much isn't it a much a larger force isn't it again by applying by pushing or pulling any truck or bus or lorry isn't it any car or any heavy vehicle or any what can i say any uh, any heavy object isn't it any furniture this force is not ample we need to apply a large force so same in case of a tennis ball or a, a cricket ball or a football by applying a least force we can easily defeat its inertia Isn't it? We are depleting its inertia because inertia is to keep its original state in the which state it was in. It was in previously. So we are depleting the inertia. Now if we take a huge stone, isn't it? We cannot move it. So it means we are unable to deplete its inertia. So it means more will be the mass of the object. We need more force is required to displace it. So that's why mass is called the measurement. More mass, more inertia. Very easy. we can stop by applying by applying a least force we can stop a moving bicycle coming towards us but if a truck or any bus is coming towards us it is impossible to stop it so its inertia is heavier clear so this that's why mass is the measurement of inertia now in the definition of force it is what, what did i say that is uh, the physical physics which changes or tends to change i forgot to mention one thing that is tends to change tends to change means makes an effort it is not mandatory that by applying any force okay a body we must a stop a body which which is at rest must move its moving is mandatory and a body which is moving it will it's stopping its ceasing of its motion is mandatory so fixed force doesn't mean change in its state tends to change means if a body is at rest and by applying the external reason that is force if we cannot move it doesn't mean that we are not applying any force for example now i am pushing with my utmost energy applying at most force if anybody if anyone apply it will pull push the wall apply maximum amount of force to move the wall or to move the compartment of a train or any bus or a crane it is impossible but doesn't it mean that we are not applying any force obviously because we are applying some muscular force so that's why it means our interest it means our effort we are applying some effort but in spite of that the body is not moving it doesn't mean that we are not applying any force obviously we are applying some force so that's why it's what tends to change which makes some effort tries clear so this is about the first law of newton's first law of motion now comes about inertia okay so from first law of motion we can get the concept and the definition of force and inertia okay now inertia now since we have seen if there are two state of motion a body or this two states state of rest and state of motion and both are called and both and they can retain keep both their property if body is at rest at rest opposes change in its state a body changes opposes the change in both its state if a body wants to be at body at rest it wants to be at rest keep maintain retain its state of rest it is inertia also inertia and when a body is already in motion it also opposes change in its motion that is it don't want to be come to at rest it's also called inertia so that's why inertia are of two types one is called inertia at rest or rest and inertia motion clear so the property of a body the inertia the property of a body due to which a stationary body wants to be at rest it means it wants to maintain keep retain its state of rest it's called inertia of rest and the body and the property due to which the body already in motion wants to be in motion in the state of motion is called inertia 
inertia of motion. So many examples. Okay, I will just uh, discuss few examples. Now it's a very commonly observed fact that a common observed fact that when a vehicle, a bus or train is at rest, isn't it? So when it start, when it okay, when it start move, when it starts moving, the passengers, isn't it, wheels in the backward direction. Now what is the reason? Now when the bus is at is at rest, since the entire the entire body of the passengers are also at rest. Now if we divide our body into two parts, that is lower part and our part, since the lower part that speed is in contact with the floor of the bus or train. So it is in touch. So whatever the bus will do, it will follow its command. But the upper part is in the free. It is free, isn't it? It is not it, okay, it is since it is not in contact with the floor of the bus or train, it is not going to follow its command. It is free. So when the bus is at rest, the entire body is at rest and the lower part that is feet touched with the surface of the bus or train is at rest. When it starts moving, since the feet, the lower part of the body is in contact with it, so along with it, it will also follow, obey its command order. It is also going away with it. While the upper part, it is at rest, so it will say, no friend, I am not interested, you can go. So what will happen? Lower part is touched. It will, so the upper part, since initially it is, it was at rest, enter body was at rest, but lower part is in touch with the floor of the bus. So it will move away. But what? But the upper part will try to maintain, keep, retain its previous state of rest, that is inertia of rest, since it was that. So it don't want to lose its property, inner property. He is to born, he is very insist. You may go, friend, I am not interested. I will maintain, keep, retain my previous state. So, it will want to maintain its inertia motion, it will move, it will go in the forward direction and the body. So, this is the reason behind the leaning of the behind of the passengers when a bus or train or any vehicle is at rest start moving. Opposite thing happens, now if that moving bus suddenly comes to at rest, those passengers lean in the forward direction. Same logic, since the entire body when the bus or train is in the motion, entire bus body is in the state of motion. Since lower part is attached with the floor of the bus, it will follow its command since it is in contact with the floor of the bus. Upper part is still free. It is free. It is not the slave of the bus or train. When the bus suddenly comes to us, okay, comes to at rest, since lower part is in touched, in contact with them, so it immediately it starts. Again the upper part it will say, no friend, I am not interested to stop. You can stop. I will maintain my previous state. That is state of motion. So, we will linger in the forward direction. So, this is the same. Same logic or explanation is applicable when a passenger from a moving train or bus generally jumped out and he fall down in the... Isn't it? He generally fall down in the forward direction. Isn't it? Why? Since his entire body... Isn't it? Since while in the train his entire body was at motion, clear. So when he wants to get stuck, isn't it? So when he jump, when he jump out of the train, his entire body was in motion. The lower part immediately touch the ground. The ground is at rest. So the lower part, as soon as it touch with the floor of the ground or the rest ground at rest, it wants to get stuck. But the upper part will try to maintain its previous state that is inertia of motion so lean forward will fall down isn't it again in spite of stopping the pedaling of the cycle it doesn't come to at rest immediately as soon as the fan is rotating over my head isn't it so after switching off if we switch if i switch off the fan immediately it doesn't come to at rest because still it is moving initially when you stop it it will still may want wants to maintain its previous state. Isn't it? It cannot, it wants to maintain its previous state, so that's why it is just moves sometimes. Isn't it? Clear? Again, an athlete, before jumping, he generally, isn't it? Generally, the limb, he generally move in the backward direction. Isn't it? It means, he generally move in the backward direction, he stored some energy. Isn't it? It is also about the, the matter of momentum. Clear? He want to store some momentum then he jumps this is the matter of momentum okay so all these are reasons in the in case of playing the carom isn't it all the pillar of the coins when you hit the lower coin isn't it all the coins from upper 
generally without disturbing generally takes their places and comes to at rest because when the striker isn't it all the coins were at rest previously when the striker because striker is moving so in strike okay the coin at the extremely bottom position when it, it is touches with the strike it is disturbing his position so along with it it is moving but the upper coins are generally wants to maintain this previous state that is state of rest and they want to maintain the previous state and they comes to rest. so many examples so many examples the reason is the same okay so this was the first law now moves on to the second law so from second law we can what 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 is the second law second law states that the force the applied force on any body is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum of a body and it takes place the, the change in momentum takes place in the direction of the force it means the change in momentum takes place in the direction in which a force acts so the applied force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum so first of all you need to know what is momentum momentum is generally expressed as the product of mass and velocity that is m into v mass into velocity it means it is called motional mass a mass with motion or motion with mass clear so it means the momentum can be changed either in change in its mass or change in velocity so let's see from so this is the momentum okay now from second law we get the information about measurement of force and inertia relation about force mass acceleration and relation between force and change in momentum so let's see so the measurement of both force and inertia so we have already got already achieved the concept and definition of force and inertia so since it is very commonly observed fact that that if we take any object any chair or any table or any object now if we want to move up to some certain distance we need to apply something that is force that is if you want to create some acceleration now if you want to move further move it up to greater distance it is very easy you don't need to say more force is required isn't it if we want to move displace any object that is if you want to displace a chair or a table up to a distance of 10 feet Then we need to apply some definite force. If suppose it is 10 newton, now if you want to displace it more than that is, if you want to displace it up to 50 feet or 20 feet, obviously, since distance is much, so force always should be double. So that's why, if we want to create more acceleration, more distance, force is directly proportional to acceleration. To create more acceleration, because force is much. Then, if we want, to, okay, if we want to displace. if we want to displace a body of lighter weight and a heavier weight obviously suppose a bicycle and a car now if you want to displace both the cycle and the car up to the same distance it is very easy okay it is needless to say unnecessary to say in case of moving car we will need to apply more force isn't it so that's why force is directly proportional to mass so combinedly we can get force is directly proportional to the product of mass and acceleration since it is a constant if we abolish it remove it we will get a constant k is equal to constant which depends on the value of the force mass and acceleration now if we assume f equals to m is equal to a is equal to 1 it means a force okay by creating which by creating on a body of unit mass creates a unit acceleration and if we call it a unit force then k is equal to 1 Putting the value of k is equal to one, we can get f is equal to m. So this is the measurement of force from first law, which we which, which we didn't get. Here we get the measurement of force. So from here we can also get an alternative definition of force from first law. We have already got the definition of force. Here we can also say the reason of creation of acceleration or retardation or deceleration is force, isn't it? Can't we say? Obviously we can say. So for a constant force, if force is constant we can say acceleration and mass are inversely proportional to each other it means to create same acceleration in two bodies isn't it in case of heavier body acceleration is less if mass is more acceleration is less isn't it for lighter body acceleration is more for heavier body acceleration is less or if you want to create much acceleration mass is less 
or less acceleration mass in body. It means to create same kind of okay. Conversely, we can say from here we can get also the measurement of inertia also. Why? It it means in case of two bodies with different masses. Different masses means one is of lighter body, one is of heavier body. If you want to create same acceleration, so in case of a body of heavier mass, we need to apply more force. Don't need to say, isn't it? Okay. So this is the measurement of both force and inertia. Now comes to the momentum. Okay. Now since momentum is the product of both mass with velocity, as I said, mass with motion, motion with mass. So change in momentum since there are it depends on the two factors, both mass and velocity. So delta p delta p denotes the change. So change in momentum. So since momentum is depends on both the factors, mass and velocity. So change in momentum can take place either by change in its mass or in its velocity or both. Both obviously. So that is mass. It is constant change in velocity or change in mass and change or velocity is constant. Okay. So the first there is no problem with the first. Okay, the first term that is mass is constant and change in velocity. Question arises from the second term. Can mass be changed? Is mass a variable quantity? So far we have grown up by learning mass cannot be changed. Whatever be the condition, but yes it can be changed. Okay, it needs explanation. You know what? So let's move to the first term. When mass is constant, mass if mass is constant, it means change in momentum can take place in, in change in any quantity, either in mass or in velocity. So when change in velocity takes place, so mass cannot be changed. So m is constant. So we have already known in our daily experience, mass cannot be changed, isn't it? So in this case, change in momentum takes place only in case of change in Velocity, velocity can be changed, isn't it? When when a train, okay, leaves a platform, leave a railway station, or or a train which is just arriving in into a platform, velocity is variable, isn't it? Obviously, the velocity or the in case of a journey of a car, the velocity of a car in a crowded in a road or in a busy market, in speed increases, decreases, isn't it? So velocity of is always keep changing. But mass is constant. Why? Because in our daily life, we have already seen all the numericals we do in our exercise. A body, a train is of mass. Applying this force creates okay. Find out the acceleration. Because a train which is at Bolpur now, when it will reach in the Badwan, meanwhile in between these two, its mass cannot be changed. We assume its mass is constant. But there is only one reason why. Because it is only possible when the body is moving. With the velocity much much less than that of the velocity of light, we know the velocity of light is the optimum, ultimate. The speed of light is the ultimate in this universe, which is whose value is three into ten to the power eight meter per second. No particle, no object can travel with a speed faster than light, isn't it? According to Newton's, Einstein's special theory of relativity. So in our daily life, isn't it? All the objects, the car, cycle, motorcycle, bus, train, all objects, we walk, we fast, isn't it? Everything, every object, its velocity is much, much less than that of the speed of light. Only in that case, mass is constant. So in our practical life, daily life, only this case is applicable. Change in momentum takes place only due to change in velocity, not in case of mass. Mass cannot be changed when a car is here and when it travels. When it reaches its destination after traveling 30 km, in meanwhile, in between these two, mass cannot be changed. Yes, mass can change and velocity can be constant. When its velocity is equal to when a particle moving with a velocity equals to speed of light, because according to special theory of relativity, Einstein's special theory of relativity, when any body moves or travels having velocity closer or equal to speed of light. Is is mass changes increases up to significant value only in that case we can say mass is changed. but which is not practical possible in our daily life that is in practical life because in our daily life all the all the moving object moves with a velocity much much greater than speed so but in both the cases it is applicable so mass can only be changed that is mass can okay mass can only be constant. For a particle moving with velocity much much less than that of speed of light, but change in mass can only take place when that is it is not constant when any particle moves with 
velocity equals to the speed of light. Very clear. Because in our daily life, we cannot see any object. It is impossible. Okay. It is applicable in case of any atomic particle. That's like electron, obviously. Now comes to rate of change of momentum. We can express force in terms of rate of change of momentum. Since it's rate, so obviously the expression of time will obviously come. It means how fast or slow, how fast or slow momentum can change this. Since it is a common observed fact, isn't it? Two bodies of same masses, two bodies may have same mass, but if their velocity is not same, so it is very easy. If two bodies of same masses, if they are moving with different velocity, so obviously the required force to stop. The more force will be is required to stop the body moving with higher velocity. Again, if two bodies are moving with same velocity, if they are of two different masses, obviously higher force will be required to stop the body having higher mass, isn't it? Since a, isn't it? Since a bike or a lorry or or a truck or bus is coming moving with same velocity, masses are different. We don't need to say that the mass of the truck or the bus is much much heavier than that of the bike or the motorcycle. So obviously, larger force is required to stop that lorry, bus, or track. Okay. Again, when two bodies, when two cars, when two bikes are moving with same, two cycles are coming. Okay. Two riders riding bicycles with same masses. Okay. okay. But if one is moving with 50 km per hour and one is coming moving with 100 km per hour, so obviously, in case of the rider who is coming with 100 km per hour. Larger force is required to stop it. Why? Because of greater momentum. Clear? So this is the concept of change in momentum. So rate of change of momentum. So we will see it as soon as that for our daily life. That is all the object moving with velocity much much less than that of speed of light. So here moment the change in momentum can only take place due to change in velocity because mass is constant. So mass into change in velocity it is mv minus mu. Okay. Assuming that the mass of the body is n, its, its initial velocity was u and final velocity is v. So rate of change of momentum is final velo final momentum minus initial momentum, mv minus mv. So rate of change of momentum, rate means divided by time. So m into delta v by t. So m v by m taking out m as common, m v minus v by t is equals to m a. Why? Because we have already learnt in the last chapter there, that is previous chapter acceleration is the rate of change of velocity v minus e by t. So since in the previous expression we have learned that f is equal to m a here we have already got the rate of change of momentum is also equals to mass into acceleration. So here we can say geometrically we can say force is equal to rate of change of momentum. Clear? Both are equals to m. So this is the okay so in this way we can express force in the in terms of rate of change of momentum. <laughs> Now, how Newton's first law, how can we obtain Newton's first law from second law? So from second law, what do we, okay, what do we get? We get f is equal to m a, substituting the value of acceleration, m into b minus e by t. Now, if there is no force in absence of any kind of external force, it means f is equal to 0. Then it means acceleration equals to 0. Clear? Since m cannot be 0, mass cannot be 0, we all know that any body, any particle, possess at least some mass. So, since m, in, m into a is equal to 0, so any one expression term has to be 0, since mass cannot be 0, so obviously acceleration is 0. Since acceleration is 0, so the expression v minus e by t equals to 0. So, it means v minus e equals to 0, so v is equal to u. Now, what does it mean? It means if a body is a, was at rest, it means v is equal to 0. Final velocity obviously is 0. If a body was moving initially with any form speed, it will also both same. If, we, if it is at if it was at rest, u is equal to 0, v is equal to 0, means the body is at rest. If u is equal to 50 km per hour, v is equal to 50 km per hour, it means it is keep maintaining its uniform velocity, which is nothing but first law. But if no external force is applied, a body must continue in its state of rest or in uniform motion, which is nothing but Newton's first law motion. So this is how we can obtain Newton's first law motion from second law. And another law, which is one law left, that is third law. From these two laws, we can get only the definition, force and the measurement of force and inertia. But we cannot say how force acts on a body. So Newton's third law generally fulfills this, what can I say, this limitation. That is Newton's third law, you all know that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. 
is how force acts on the body. This information we generally get from Newton's third law. Very easy. How to explain? Now during quarrelling, if you give a blow to one of your friends, obviously you will have to be ready to receive one blow. A blow in return, or if anybody gives you a blow, or give you a slap, obviously you will not be okay. You will not be quiet. So you will obviously you are going to hit him. Okay. So this is Newton's laws of motion. Then it has been said when we hit the wall, why do we get hurt? It is generally said as you that wall is also giving some reactionary force. So the force. So this is all about reaction and reaction. The force, the two forces, the force which we apply when we blow, when we blow, if we hit the wall, if I hit the wall, the force. What is force? The force which I am applying on the wall is called action, and which is returning, it is called reactionary force. Okay. So it means if you, if I am Mr. X and Y, fighting is okay. Fighting is going on. If X gives a blow to Y, this is called action. And if Y in return gives another blow to X, this is called reaction. So we can say force, this action and reaction doesn't act on the same bodies. It always acts on two different bodies. So that's why equilibrium cannot be established in these cases. Why? Now action and reaction are equal and opposite to each other. Why? Now we have already learned about change in momentum, isn't it? So if action means if X applies gives a blow on Y, so it means it applies a force it creates a change in momentum in y if y in returns give another blow which is called reaction it also creates change in momentum in x so these are opposite so these are opposite change in momentum so that's why reaction and reaction are called opposite always remember they never acts on the same body mind it as i said if we push a table or chair, I am applying force that is action on the table. They will also exert equal or opposite force to me on, a, on me. When a book is at rest on the table, its weight acts in the downward direction, means it is applying some force that is action on the table. And conversely, to maintain its balance, the table is also applying a reactionary force, which is a force in return, which is called reaction, which is applying on the book. So action is acting on the table. Reaction is acting on the books. They are equal and opposite to each other. Clear? So, now there are so many wide applications. Isn't it? The, uh, the flying bird. The flying of bird in the sky. Because during flying with his, with his wings, he generally sweeps the air in the backward direction. It means the bird applies action on the air. And according to Newton's third law, the air, the swift air also exerts some equal and opposite reaction on it. Okay, and resultantly it is zero and it, is, it moves in the forward direction, isn't it? During the rocket, the motion of rocket, isn't it? It generally uses gas, isn't it? During burning of the gas, generally gas, okay, the fuel, the fuel burns, the gas ejects, it's not in the backward direction. So, it creates a high reactionary force, it's apply action on the gas, gas also exerts an equal and opposite reaction, okay which creates a large change in momentum and moves in the forward direction. During firing of gun or cannon, generally gun, okay, recoils in the backward direction. Same thing is applied when any passenger generally, okay, drops on the bank, the boat is generally moved in the backward direction. Okay, this all are one person is giving, applying on the sun, okay. When you fire the bullet, the gun or cannon reply, okay, exerts a force on the, what can I say, the bullet, isn't it? And bullet in return applies the reactionary force. Okay, so it, that's why it moves in the back direction. Okay? So all these are about the Newton's laws of motion. Clear? So I think the concept is already clear to all of you. Okay, meet you in the next video.